فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم We're now going to speak about the second part of علم الحديث رواية علم الحديث رواية The second part is تطبيقي تطبيقي here means it is it is application of the theoretical sciences which you have learned as an individual. And inshallah ta'ala, here we're going to mention the practical side of it. And the practical side is what's known as ilmul jarhi wa ta'adil. Ilmul jarhi wa ta'adil. And the ilm al jarh wa ta'adil is a practical application of the science you've learned, the theories that you studied. You're now going to apply it. Ilm al jarh wa ta'adil is an application of it. Are we all together? You learn, you apply it, you see it taking place in front of you what you learned. So a lot of people, they study ilm al-hadith, they study mustalah al-hadith, and they don't go towards tatbiqi, they don't, see the, they don't go to the application of it. So they just know theories all day. But if you bring a hadith in front of them and say, is it weak or sahih, they won't know how to, how to work on this hadith. So the application here, the application here is important. And what does it is ilm al wa ta'adil. Ilm al wa ta'adil, brothers and sisters, is the books of Ilm al Ta'adil are written in three ways. The first one is, what does Jarh Ta'adil actually first of all mean? Jarh Ta'adil means praising and criticism of narrators. Disparagement and what? And praisal of narrators. Okay? The books that are written are written in three ways. The first one are, Musannafat, books that are written fi du'afai, the weak narrators. So that's one book, you buy that book, all of the individuals that you may need, inshallah ta'ala, you find them in this book. It's, it's the weak people who have been criticized, you'll find them in this book. Are you with me? You find it there. So it's generally called Du'afa, sometimes it's even called al majruhin sometimes it's called al matwukin All of those names are roughly the same. Du'afa, <coughs> Majruhin, Matrukin, uh, and etc. The second type is al thiqat Thiqat are those who are praised, who have high integrity, they have nobility, they are praised for their honor and they are praised for their precision. So they're called the thiqat. They're called the they're called a thiqat. That book is called a thiqat. So when you go to that book, you're only gonna find the reliable uh, praised narrators. Are we all together on that? So only thiqat is in there. The first one was what? Al-du'afa, weak what, individuals. The second one, you're only going to find in that book, you're going to only find in that book, al-thiqat, those who are praised and those who are. The third type is al-thiqat al duafa. They're both in there, together. You will find the thiqat in there and you also find the duafa I mentioned in there. They are all mentioned. So let's start inshallah ta'ala with what Jarh wa Ta'adil means and the definition of Jarh wa Ta'adil. Jarh wa Ta'adil is a science in which a person will research in it. Ilmun yubhatu fihi an ahwal al ruwati min haythu al adalati wa dabt. You will sit down and you will study the situation of a narrator in terms of his integrity, his adala, and his dabt, his precision, and his memory. And all of the attributes and characteristics that are connected to this. You're going to study that. 
And that when you're criticizing a person in hadith, brothers and sisters, two things are being criticized about them. One is their adala, and the other one is their dabt. Adala here means their integrity, and dabt means their precision. A person gets criticized, they're being criticized for one. The narration in which the person's integrity is being criticized, his narrations are not accepted. <coughs> huh? They are not accepted. It depends on what type of adala it is. Huh? If the ta'an, the criticism of the narrator, it goes towards his adala, it's because of kidib, he's lying. Then it becomes mudul, fabricated. Never would that hadith be accepted. Or if he is muttahamun bil kadib, he's suspected of lying. When the scholars they say muttahamun bil kadib, he's suspected of lying. What does that mean? Huh? Why would they believe that? How did they come to that conclusion? Mutahab mm bil -hmm. is a person who only is all he's caught lying in his day-to-day -day affairs. But when it comes to the hadith of Prophet, he doesn't lie. If he talks to you about something, if he tells you something, if he says something, he's mutahab bil -kadib. Are you there? He's different from the person who is what? Who lies about the hadith. The one who lies about the hadith is the kadab. He lies against everything. But this person is only a lie, he only lies on what? His day-to-day -day, day -to -day affairs. Also when a person's adala is criticized is when a person is, is accused of bid'ah, innovation. And that bid'ah can be one of two. It can be bid'ah to mufassaka or it can be bid'ah mukaffara. It's bid'ah, innovation. If a person sometimes integrity is, is fisk, He's a, a sinner, an open, outward sinner. Okay? He's out there drinking alcohol or he's committing zina or whatnot. Also, this is criticize, criticism of his adala, his integrity. All of these are his integrity. The second criticism that can be put on a person is their precision, their memory. And this is if the person's memory is up there, the scholars they say, thept. And the best praise a person can be given is thiqatun thabt. What does the word thiqa go towards? His adala. Thabt goes towards his what? His dabt, his precision. So they say thiqatun thabt. He's 100% on this and he's 100% on that. When we say 100%, we mean ghalabatul dhan. There's no person who doesn't do a mistake. Huh? But the, what we say, we, we mean he rarely does a mistake. He rarely does a mistake. He's precise, he's sharp, he's accurate like that. Okay? So this is what you have to realize. Jarh al-Ta'adil deals with that. Because the religion has to be protected. So, this chapter, Jarh al-Ta'adil, is one of the chapters where backbiting is now permissible. To backbite somebody, in order to protect the religion, this chapter now, Jarh al-Ta'adil, it opened that door. That's why Imam al Nawi has in his kitab, Riyadh al Salihin, Babu ma yubahu min al ghiba. Nawi has in Riyadh al Salihin, the chapter where backbiting is permissible. And there's six times he mentions, Nawi mentions six times when backbiting is permissible. Are we together? If a wife wants to complain about her husband, for instance, to a qadi, a judge, is she allowed to speak against him? She's only allowed to say what she has a problem with. She sticks to that. She's allowed to, even if he's not. <coughs> even if he's not there. Yeah? Yeah, is not, it's not ghiba, it's not backbiting. Because this is maslaha. It's a what? It's a maslaha shara'i. Shara'i benefit. Second is, from the sixth, is this concept of hadith. Ilmu jarh wa ta'adil. The science of hadith is what? It's siyanat al deen to protect the religion. That's why now it got made permissible. The scholars do differ whether you can call it backbiting. Huh? Some scholars they say you can't call it backbiting. Even though the person did criticized, you just call it jahr al-ta'adil, you can't call it a ghibah. 
and others they said La, it can be called ghiba and it is ghiba which is permissible. There's a khilaf within the scholars and this khilaf is khilaf lafdi, it's a khilaf which is just a wording. Because both parties are allowing that the person can be criticized. Okay? So this is al jahr al-ta'adil. Does the science of jahr al-ta'adil, is it over, is it finished? Is it closed? Is it done and dusted? No. Jahr al-ta'adil is inshallah ta'ala till the day of judgment. It carries on. It will not stop. People are going to be criticized. People are going to be praised. Sahih. But jarh wa ta'adil is like a sword. If you can't carry the sword, don't pick it up. Who is able to give it its full rights? Huh? You have to have the arm that can pick up the sword, that can use. You can't just just because you got a sword that doesn't mean you can slice everybody that's in front of you. you have to be a al-jarh uh, al-ta'adil is something a person needs to remember that uh, they're going to be questioned the day of judgment about the people's honor and their reputation. Yahya ibn Ma'id rahimahullahu ta'ala was scared, was worried, was concerned about the criticism of people. Ibn al-Daqiq al-Eid, what did he say? He said two people are on the brink of destruction. Who are they? The scholars of hadith and the judge. The Hakim and the Qadi, the one who's judging between the people. The reason is because you can be unfair. Sometimes desires may enter into you and you become unfair to a person. This is Hufram al Hufar in Iran. You're on the edge and the brink of, uh, of the hellfire. So you need to remember that the honor of the people for, it, for you is permissible when there is a legislated, justifiable, shari reason. As for the fact of the matter, I just want to speak about this person. I just want to talk about this person. Are we all together on that? So we, let's go to the first of the Jarh uh, al Now we understand what Jarh al means. The first one is books that are written in Du'afa. Du'afa. Du'afa are the weak individuals. The first person who wrote in Du'afa is Yahya ibn Ma'id. Yahya ibn Ma'id died in the year 233. He was the first person to write in Al-Du'afa. And then after him came Ali ibn al-Madini, who died in the year 234. And then after him came Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahim al-Barqiyu al-Zuhri, who died in the year 249 Hijriya. And then after that came Abu Hafsin al-Fallas, who died in the year 240. 249. After that, books came non-stop. These were the figureheads who put down a lot of that which was that is which is implemented. <coughs> the first book that we're going to start from the list. So these are the figureheads who spoke about people, who criticized the narrators. Who, who were prominent, they were known for narrators. Yahya ibn Ma'in, for instance, Ahmed would ask him, Imam Ahmed would ask him, do you know this from a narrator? Huh? What's, what's he like? Yahya ibn Ma'in would either praise or criticize him. Yahya was so strong and he was so feared, he was so feared that if a person came to Iraq, they would boast that they touched the hand of Yahya ibn Ma'in, that he shake their hands. You know, Yahya shake my hands, you know. He, and Yahya knows me. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Anybody who Yahya ibn Ma'in spoke against and said anything about them, it was closed chapter. You, your issue is buried. It's not looked into ever again. No one's going to discuss your situation ever again. He had that influence. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Anybody Yahya spoke against, it was closed discussion. The issue would not be un it wouldn't be open again. And if you look at the haiba, the honor, the respect in which he had in Iraq was of this issue. Rahimahullah ta'ala. So people need to understand that he had that influence. It's very important. 
And he was a very close of who? He was a very close friend of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And Yahya ibn Ma'in being who he was, an Imam. Are you with me, brothers? He was a what? An Imam. And being a person who strove to make sure that he made his criticism as accurate as he could, he also used to get it wrong when he criticized people. Guess who he spoke against? Al-Imam al-Shafi'i. Yahya ibn Ma'in criticized Al-Imam al-Shafi'i. That Imam Ahmad was told that Yahya ibn Ma'in criticized Shafi'i. And Ahmad said he doesn't know Shafi'i. He didn't accept it from him. And today, if somebody comes up to you and says, Sheikh so and so criticized this person, and you look into the issue and you realize it's bighayri bayyina, it's no proof for this. These are all lawazim. You're necessitating, necessita necessitating this from their speech. And you say, I don't agree. Sorry. I don't. I differ with you on this issue. Automatically, you are told to, you're, you're automatically made to leave da'ira to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. You're not a Salafi anymore. You're not from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah anymore. This is a disease. Wallahi, it's a marad. Because the issue of al jarh wa ta'adil, the scholars, qarnan ba'da qarnan, they differed. They, they differed. And their views regarding narrators were different. Sahih? There's two Imams, Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukayn and Affan ibn Muslim al Safah, both of these two Imams. Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al Mu'allim mentions in the Muqaddim of his Kitab al Jarh wa Ta'adil of Ibn Abi Hatim. Mu'allim has a tahqiq on the Kitab. In the Muqaddim he mentions that Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukayn, do you know who Abu Nu'ayn ibn Fadl ibn Dukayn is? He's the Sheikh of Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Rather, he's the Imam of the Ulama of Hadith. Bukhari and Muslim and others. He's an Imam up there. Who is up also up there? Affan ibn Muslim. Affan ibn Muslim is also up there. He's an Imam in Aimmat al Sunnah. And he's also an Imam in Hadith. Are you with me? Both of these two narrators, Abu Na'im Fadl ibn Dukayn and Affan ibn Muslim, they were sharp in their criticism. Like, in other words, their criticism of narrators was tough. Meaning they would criticize beyond the amount. So what did Ali ibn al-Madini say? Ali ibn al-Madini said, I am not going to take the criticism of Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukayn. Nor am I going to take the criticism of Affan ibn Muslim. These two individuals, they don't let anyone go. There's not a person who they see except they criticize him. I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna take the, these two. Affan ibn Muslim, and I'm not gonna take what? Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukayn, both of these two individuals. I've left these, these two. Pay attention. Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukayn, today, if you open the books of Jarm al Ta'adil and you open the books of Du'afa, uh, and you look at the books of Thiqat and Al Majruheen, you will struggle to find the criticism of Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukayn and Affan ibn Muslim. But what was it that was said about them? They were excessive in speaking about people. So we should, find, we should find some of their statements, right? Because they became excessive and they were too much, people and the ulama of hadith disregarded their criticism. Are you with me? They were imams. They were scholars. They were precise in their knowledge. He's, you know Abu Nu'ayn from the Dukayn was the man that Yahya ibn Ma'in tried to test and he kicked him on the chest. Abu Nu'ayn from the Dukayn, his hifz was so strong that Yahya ibn Ma'in, Abdul Razak ibn Hammam al-Sal'ani and, sorry, Abu Nu'ayn, they came to Abu Nu'ayn, Ahmad ibn Hanbal and who? Yahya ibn Ma'in, they came to him, they visited him. When they visited him, Ahmad said to Yahya, Yahya, Abu Nu'ayn from the Dukayn is a man of hadith. His hifz and his understanding is precise, a precision, I'll tell you this. Ahmed said this to Yahya, you don't need to test him. He said, no, I'm going to test him. I'm going to see this for myself. So he went, he brought hadith from him, for, to him, roughly 10 hadiths. Each hadith he placed in the middle of each hadith, 
a, a, a narration that's not his narration. To see if your memory is there, they will bring you a hadith that you've narrated to an individual. And they said, is this your hadith? If you're sharp, you're going to be like, yeah, I narrated the hadith. From fulan and fulan and fulan, good. This is to see if you, you know your own narrations. Are you with me? So he brought in, in between the narrations one narration that's not his. So he tells him his narration, then a narration that's not his. And then his narration, and a narration that's not his. And his narration, and a narration that's not his. Just to see if he knows what Abu Naim is speaking about. So Abu Naim, first time he asked him, he said, yes, that's my narration. He told him. Second one, he asked him, he said, no, it's not mine. Next one, it's mine. It's like, and he realized, mm, why are you always asking me one that's not mine? So he saw this was a, it was, it was a plan that uh, Yahya put out. So Abu Naim looked at Ahmed and he said, you're honorable. You are right, you're righteous to do something silly like this. So he took out his leg and he put it on the chest of Yahya Ibn Ma'in and kicked him off the table, off the chair he was sitting on. And Yahya tumbled over, he stood up, he cleared the dust off himself, and they left the gathering of Abu Nu'aym. When they left, Ahmed said, did I not tell you? What did I say to you? Did I not say to you, don't test this man? And he said to him, Wallahi, his kicking was worth more to me than the traveling that we did to Abdul Razak ibn Hamam Salani. When we went and visited Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak ibn Hamam Salani, and we took hadith from him, Right now, the kicking of Abu Nu'aym was worth everything for me. Now I know when I talk about who Abu Nu'aym is, I know he's a strong man. So Yahya saw this from him. This is who Abu Nu'aym is. He's up that level. He is a teacher of Yahya ibn Nu'aym. Even then, Ali ibn Madini said, I'm not going to take his narrations, uh, his criticism. I'm not going to take it and I'm not going to accept it. Why? Because he has extremism in criticism. He's extreme and he's harsh in his criticism. Sahih? Because the ulama, they categorize the narrators into three types. Mutashaddid, Mutawassid, and Mutasahid. Mutashaddid is a person who's harsh in his narrations. And then the Mutawassid is a person who's in the middle. Bukhari is from the Mutawassitin. He's fair. He gives and he takes. Mutasahilin is like Ibn Hibban, mathalan. And Ibn Hibban's qadiyah is we're going to have to be talking about a bit more details if we get time for it. Like in Ibn Abi Hatim al Razi and Abu Nu'ayn Fadl al Dukain and Affal al Muslim, and they put up the harshest people. They are mutashaddid. Harsh. Are you with me? So now today you see somebody, a scholar, criticize another scholar. You as a student of knowledge need to number one understand that the issue of criticism is ijtihadi. What's ijtihadi brothers? Ijtihadi is independent personal deduction. It's not based upon textual evidences. And revelation is not being sent on this particular sheikh. Are we all together? What well, he's ruling here is ijtihadi. And it is ijtihadi from one angle. I have to understand, okay? It's ijtihadi from a particular angle, which is the hukum he's giving is ijtihadi. Are you there together, brothers? This ruling which he's given to this particular person that he's assessing is. For instance, if a, person, a, a reliable person comes up to you and says to you, brother, I saw Fulan ibn Fulan drinking alcohol. What do you say? And he's reliable to you. You will take it from him, right? You will. Because Allah said in the Quran, If I'm reliable, if a person who is not reliable comes up to you regarding a matter, verify. So what about if the person is reliable? The mafhum of the ayah is that if the person is reliable, you don't need to verify. Sahih? So I don't, if he tells me that he saw somebody drink alcohol and he's reliable to me, I take the statement of his. I'll say, okay, Jameel, you saw him with your own eyes? Nah, Jameel. But then he says to me, but the person is a fasid. I say the khabar and the information that you brought regarding what you saw, I take that from you. But the ruling that you passed on him by calling him a fasid, this is an ijtihad. I don't have to take that from you. I need to verify if this person even knew that khabar is haram. Huh? And etc. And etc. And etc. Does that make sense? I need to do my homework. So when the ulama come 
and they criticize a person, it was either accepted or was rejected. It was accepted by some of the scholars, they took it, and others didn't take it. Are we together on that? Are we? Are we together on that? So now that we see a person of the Sunnah, he's calling to Sunnah, another Imam from the Sunnah, and they criticize each other, we need to realize there's also another qa'ida, just like there's a qa'ida called al jarh al-mufassam, muqaddamun, ala ta'adil, that a detailed criticism takes precedence over a praise, we also say, kalam al-aqran yutwa wa la yurwa, that the criticism of contemporaries, two individuals who are leveled, who are contemporaries, who are the same caliber in ilm and in, in righteousness and obedience and taqwa, uh, from what seems to us, uh, we should say that they're both their statements are not accepted. What, what they said about each other. Like for example, Muhammad Nasr al marwazi and Ibn Manda. They spoke against each other. What did Nawi Dhabi say? Dhabi said, we're not going to take any of their statements regarding each other. Muhammad Nasr al marwazi remained and Ibn Manda remained. No one took the statement of each other regarding one another. And this has happened over centuries and it happened decades. Now on the other hand, we're finding a person sunnah, they, you know what they say? They say he's an imam, jabalun asham, alimun jihbid. And they just say, wow, jameel, mashallah. And they call him al-allama. And then tomorrow, guess what he is? Jahilun, la ya'arifu yameenu al jamil. Ha, adallu min himari ahli. How can he yesterday be a scholar? And today he's the most ignorant person. It doesn't work like that. Whose mind are you playing on? So, the science of Jarh wa Ta'adil, when you look at it, there is ifraq and tafriq. And everything in the religion, you tend to find that. There's extreme in exaggeration and there's extreme or negligence. There's another group of people who do not like the idea of anyone being criticized. Everybody is a nice Muslim, let the Muslims hold hands, let's, yeah, let's do happy, yeah, happy video and hold hands and dance and no problem. This chapter and this door of criticism is no longer open. We shouldn't speak about each other. We should let each other do what we want. Let's focus on bigger issues. What are the bigger issues that you want us to focus on? Things that are rather let alone it be bigger it's actually pathetic things you want us to focus on are we all together so you find extreme on both sides on the spectrum so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us ummatan may allah make us from those who tread on the middle path khayrul umuri awsatuha the best of affairs brothers and sisters is the middle path and it's hard shaitan just wants you to go to one of the sides he will sniff your heart, he will look at you as an individual, if he feels, he sees from your enthusiasm, you're a very considerate person, you're, he will push you towards extremism in exaggeration. And if he sees from you, you're a lazy, relaxed person, he pushes you towards extreme in negligence. So you need to be careful when it comes to, yes, we do believe people should be criticized. We believe it should be done with ilm and adil and rahmah. We should believe that the person who's doing it has to have knowledge has to be fair. Don't lie about the person. Don't accuse them of what they do not believe or say. And when you're doing it, remember, mercy is needed. A rahmah and a lutf. In, because at the end of the day, you're trying to bring this back person back to the truth. And you want him to come to his senses. But if the person is a mukabir, stubborn, hard-headed individual, you've spoken to him and he does not want to take the truth, and he's misguiding so many people, then, then the need has called for you to use harshness and toughness. But a person falls into a mistake straight away, and you straight away insult them. This is not a behavior, a behavior of the Salaf al Salih. If you look at Imam Muhammad, sorry, Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab's da'wah, what would he do? He would go to the graves. He would see people making dua to the grave. And guess what they are saying? What's worse than what they're doing? They're doing shirk akbar. Muhammad Abdul Wahab will come to them in the grave that they are at and he would say to them, he wants to give da'wah, he wants to take them away from this. Guess what he'll say to them? When they say, Ya, ya Zayd ibn Khattab, give us this. He will say, Allahu khayru bin Zayd. Allah is greater than Zayd, and better than Zayd. Like, you're asking Zayd, who's greater? 
Allah, ask him. Right? The way he would say to them. Huh? And the way he would give da'wah to them alayhi, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala was a lot of hikmah. <coughs> so the books are number one. Kitab al-Du'afa al-Kabir. There's a kitab called Du'afa al-Kabir. And it is um, Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. And in, in Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, as you know, he died in the year 256 Hijriya. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And I personally don't know if it's published, I haven't seen it. I only have the Du'afa al sagir and that's what I've read. The Du'afa al kabir if it's published, Allah alam, I don't know. I'm unaware of that. Um, the second one is the Du'afa al sagir The Du'afa al sagir is by Imam al-Bukhari himself. And it has been published in India, first of all. When it first came out, it was published in India. And then it got published again in Darul Wa'i in Halab. They published it once again. Number three is Ahwal al Rijal. Ahwal al Rijal is by Abu Ishaq Ibrahim ibn Yaqub ibn Ishaq al Sa'di al Juzajani, who died in the year 259 Hijriya. And his kitab is also, the tahqiq is done by Subhi uh, al Samar Ra'i. Number four is Abu Dhafa. وَالْكَذَّابُونَ وَالْمَتْرُوكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْحَدِيثِ وَهُمْ مِنْ إِجَابَاتِ أَبِي زُرْعَةَ الرَّازِي This is basically questions that were put to Abu Zur'ata al-Razi regarding weak narrators, criticized narrators. He was asked about them and he gave them what they were. Um, and the person who asked him is Abu Uthman Sa'id ibn Amr al-Azdiyu al-Bardai rahimahu Allah ta'ala. He's a student of Imam Abu Zur'at al Razi. And this one was published and it was spread by Jamiat al Islamiyah bin Medina al Munawwara. Uh, I think a person done his doctorat, PhD on it. I don't know if he was PhD or his master's, one of the two. His name is Dr. Sayyid Sa'adi al Hashimi, rahimahullah, hafidhahullah ta'ala. I think he's still alive. The fifth book is Al Du'afa'i wal Matrukun. Al Du'afa'i wal Matrukun. And this is written by Abi Abdul Rahman. Uh, Abi Abdul Rahman Ahmad ibn Shu'ayb ibn Ali al Nasa'i. And it's written by the great Imam, and Imam al Nasa'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. His book is published many times. He is published many, many times. And um, the way it's written is that it's written in alphabetical order. The narrators in those books, he brought it in alphabetical order. And Imam al Nasa'i died the year 303 Hijriya. He died the year 303 Hijriya. The sixth book is Al-Du'afa. Al-Du'afa, which is written by Abi Ja'far Muhammad ibn Amr ibn Musa ibn Hamid al-Uqayli, rahimahullah. And he died in the year 322 Hijriya. His kitab is one of the most prominent ones that scholars they mention. The seventh one is Al-Du'afa by Abu Nu'aym Abdul Malik ibn Muhammad ibn Adi al-Istrabadi al-Jurjani, who died in the year 323 Hijriya. And the tahqiq of that kitab was done by uh, Sheikh Mazin al Sirsawi. Mazin al Sirsawi, who I met in Buraida. He came up from Egypt. He came from Egypt and he went to Buraida in Jabat al Qasim, which he currently teaches right now. He teaches the Hadith faculty. He has done tahqiqat of many books of Hadith. He's the one who worked on this kitab by, uh, by Al Imam ibn Adi. And he got a praise from the book, uh, or was read, the taqdeem was done by Ahmed Ma'bad Abdul Kareem, who is a professor in hadith in Jamiat al-Azhar. And also by Abu Ishaq al-Hawini. Sheikh Abu Ishaq al-Hawini also praised the kitab and he put a taqdeem on the book for him. And that kitab, the taba' of Sheikh Mazin al-Sarsawi, I met Sheikh Mazin al Sirsawi in uh, Jarir Bookstore. Does, that, does anyone know he has Jarir Bookstore in, in Saudi Arabia? They have a bookstore called Jarir Bookstore. I bumped into him. Uh, I was buying some, uh, some. Uh, no, Jarir Bookstore is like W. H. Smith. It's not Islamic books. I don't know why I was there. Right. Uh, I was there for a reason. I bumped into him. And Alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity to 
to uh, discuss things with him and ask him questions and alhamdulillah many questions pertaining to hadith I benefited from I asked him and I had the opportunity to read some stuff on him anyways number eight is kitab al majruhina min al muhadithina wal du'afai wal matwukin which is known as kitab al majruhin kitab al majruhin and it is written by Abi Hatim ibn Hibban al Busti rahimahullah his full name is Abi Hatim Muhammad ibn Ahmed Ibn Hibban al Busti rahimahullah ta'ala and he died in the year 354 Hijriya and again this book is also written in a uh, alphabetical order <coughs> and I advise anybody who can read the Arabic language and after we study Nukbat al Fikr and we go through it the author Ibn Hibban rahimahullah ta'ala he has made for the kitab a muqaddima which is something else and I promise inshallah ta'ala all of these books I'm mentioning a lot of them I'm going to go through the Muqaddimah because the authors, the Muqaddimah, they bring gems like Ibn Abi Hatim's Kitab Al-Jarh wa Ta'adil, the Muqaddimah, something else. And this Kitab written by Ibn Hibban, his Muqaddimah, Wallah, is a Muqaddimah which is fed, full of benefits and fawaid that a person learns the Ta'asilat, the Qawa'id of Jarh wa Ta'adil. And he, Allah, he tried very, very hard to bring these principles of Al-Jarh wa Ta'adil forward to the people. And the taqiq, the haqiq, what I have is the one written by Mahmoud Ibrahim Zayed. That's the one I have. And inshallah ta'ala, if we, the books that we're going to be going through, we're going to make this book inshallah ta'ala one of the, the muqaddimah. We can't go through the whole book. The book is volumes. But the muqaddimah, the introduction, to give you a nice understanding of the principles that he put forward, we'll do that bi uh, al kareem the ninth book is Al Kamil fi Dhuafa al Rijal. Okay? Al Kamil fi Dhuafa al Rijal. Mm hmm.